Hi, welcome to the next channel. So I get uh, various uh, queries on uh, uh, process and uh, threads, especially even uh, whenever I get uh, students who join. <laughs> Uh, they frequently ask uh, me to explain about IPC and as well as uh, the process and uh, threats and other stuff. So uh, this is something I have covered uh, in uh, various uh, contexts in a couple of episodes and also uh, some more episodes. Okay, As you can see here, uh, uh, once I have uh, discussed about uh, you know uh, uh, process and threads in uh, systems architecture perspective in which way you can architect a process uh, i mean you can uh, uh, spread the threads uh, within uh, multiple processes and uh, how you can uh, architect the same uh, based on the cpu uh, cache and uh, various other uh, you know criteria so in case if there is a thread which crashes uh, what happens uh, uh, to the process it is going to crash all other uh, threads as well same way if there is any uh, crash in a specific uh, process it is going to affect uh, underlying threads and other stuff so this is about uh, a specific context and the other context i discussed about how the load of the cpu will get affected in a you know process versus a thread like situation okay so when you do multi threading the you know uh, load of a system will change especially for a multi-core uh, cpu so this is again a different context whereas in this episode i would like to discuss about uh, in general uh, uh, you know uh, the process versus thread in case uh, this is uh, again to an extent it is not uh, for a complete new beginner this is a video which i would like to target for someone who just uh, started their career who is out of college who started their career around uh, one or two years of you know industry experience who may know already some basics of you know process and thread <laughs> or the difference between a process and thread uh, but again they would like to kind of reinforce this so that they can start uh, using them in their code uh, because this is the age they may not be a full-fledged architect but at the same time they will have some liberty so they will start uh, uh, you know uh, getting into some parts of the code or else modules of that code wherever they work okay they will have some liberty uh, to design their own modules okay so this is the age they may start uh, uh, typically it starts at around the five years of industry experience because uh, uh, that's a prime age you may get a very good uh, you know you may get uh, into a stable uh, career at the same time you may be chances are you may be out of any services company where you are working and then now you are into a product company where uh, you will be much uh, in a serious you know you know prime uh, software development uh, uh, job so this is kind of targeted for you guys actually this is not for uh, complete new beginners who don't even know what is the process and thread <laughs> difference whereas it is not even meant for someone who is uh, quite an advanced uh, architect or something who is already been into all these things so when it comes a criteria what happens is uh, whenever you go through all this uh, you know uh, discussion or else uh, the introduction about the process and threads so they kind of teach you in an academic standpoint okay so they tell about the process uh, has the pcb and of course the address space and the threads are going to share the same address space so if you see the basics of that the threads are going to have the same address space uh, which i have already discussed in so many videos so if you put a malloc or you know int abc or else if you do some uh, uh, character array or any array if you have a global variable all the threads okay sharing that same array is going to have the same access so what happens is when you do the access of a global shared resource you need to have some kind of uh, you know synchronization which i have again <laughs> discussed in you know some you know synchronization stuff synchronization the linux channel so you need to put some type of uh, synchronization so as you can see i have discussed about the mutex uh, which uh, you with which you can do the you know pthread synchronization so let me show the sample code uh, the objective is not about you know watching this video let's just go to the sample code uh, yeah uh, this is my sample code if you open the same uh, what happens is uh, i have discussed about the overall uh, logic okay sync via mutex 
Yeah, you can see here there is this uh, global variable uh, which is uh, an array. Uh, it can be anything. It can be even int a, b, c or just about anything. So, here you've got a global variable and the question is uh, these two threads are using this you know global variable so when they do access of that uh, you know shared resource so they need to have some type of synchronization as i also mentioned uh, synchronization is something i'm not a huge fan of it uh, this is again a seasoned architect uh, perspective synchronization kills the performance synchronization also brings a lot of unwanted uh, you know undesired effects okay so first and foremost you need to architect your code in a way that to, to avoid uh, as much as possible synchronization synchronization is a very bad thing in terms of performance so this is again wrongly you are teached in the college and also you may wrongly learn it because synchronization is important so they ask everywhere whether you know synchronization so you may think it is quite important it is important to learn but you should use only when it is required so the question is so you need to have some type of arrangement you can see here there is a global variable and uh, when it is getting used in multiple threads so you need to use it with caution with a proper lock in place in this case synchronization it is the same thing even if you do in a you know kernel space as well okay so in that way if you explore if not this user space code see in this case you have this uh, p thread and uh, stuff like that if not this user space code you can hop on to kernel code as well. I can take some example which have some locks. So netcore device.c here you've got some few spin locks. Uh, lock and uh, you can search here and there they may use this uh, spin locks. You can see here p type lock, offload lock and stuff like that. So the question is not about what is this lock is doing or why they have put the lock the question is somewhere they are accessing this uh, shared resource you can see list for each entry and then they are doing something so when they access this shared resource they need to lock that so that they get exclusive access and then they can do read write operation so that the other parts of that shared resource won't get corrupt and uh, you won't get any race uh, conditions or situations like that so this is what it is so, which is why in the case of uh, uh, threading versus, uh, you know, process, as you must have learned the basics. So, whenever you go and check the process control block or something like that, you will get some type of information. Uh, you may be reading about a thread will have the same, you know, PCB and other stuff. So, naturally, as it shares the same PCB, uh, typically, if you have multiple threads for a single process, so whenever you do ps uh, command, you will get one single uh, process, but in the process, you may have multiple threads. So, the CPU usage characteristics uh, will change like I have discussed in this, uh, you know, earlier episodes. So, naturally, as you can explore in the system, you know, PS and uh, PS minus AEF, it is showing all this uh, processes uh, which is uh, running in the system. And you can see here, this is what essentially happens. Each process has its own uh, PID and its parent and other stuff. But in the case of thread, they don't have any type of identity. Okay, so they exist uh, within the process itself. It is going to share the same PID. Naturally, it is going to share the same address space. So like you see seen here, it is going to share the same address space. So this is what is the fundamental differences. The question is, as you architect, so learning about this basics is aside as you architect a code as an architect please note as an architect you should have some balance at which case you need a specific uh, uh, you know uh, situation like multi-processing uh, because multi-processing has an advantage when you do multiple processing if this in case if you kill right see you have this google chrome i'm running this google chrome and it is running, uh, you know, multiple, uh, you know, processes. Each has its own PID. So, if you kill one specific process, the other process may continue to exist. So, this is the advantage. If you, if you have multiple processes, they work independently. Uh, the only drawback is they need to share uh, any information in that case like a shared memory or something like that or else in case they need to share some type of information you need to use uh, some type of ipc within this you know processes so please note if you have multiple processes you need to have some type of ipc so 
uh, you need to use uh, message queues or sockets or uh, a shared memory whatever it is and as you must have following my videos i always mention my favorite ipc is uh, sockets okay so this is what so when you are uh, designing or writing your own uh, i know logic you need to think all these aspects i mean when you are designing your own modules you need to think of all these aspects which it exactly suits and why you are picking you should not pick uh, something that okay this is so common or this is so much uh, uh, been uh, popular in the industry and this is important and this is something always gives performance and just go blindly and pick so this is why i always mention don't be a typical dumb developer just you know have some common sense think practical uh, think um, about the big picture in this particular circumstance which is more economical and which it makes sense you need to pick that particular option so you need to think when you have this type of when you need this type of conveniency where you need to expose some type of workload in multiple processes you can do uh, like a multi processing context and at the same time when you need to expose uh, just as a one single process and within that you need to run several threads like in this case you can expose as multiple threads